um, um, that some people just don't think about if they're just watching it for purely entertainment. So we're gonna have um, um, this overall preparation room, uh, scenario situations, and um, um, the, the movie and TV show reviews. And then we're gonna kind of build on from there with uh, some of the sisters uh, discussing some of the uh, things that they wanna talk about uh, in terms of uh, prepping and preparation. So right now uh, we see some hands up, uh, just keep them down for now. We're gonna go through the material and then when we're done, we'll bring everyone for questions and answers. So um, brother, Con. King Ben, uh, you guys ready? Anything you wanna add? Um, yeah, I just want to add uh, one thing before we start. Um, you know, Shalom everyone. Thank y'all for coming out. Um, we really want to, uh, we really trying to improve this platform. You know, I got these two brothers and we're looking to add, you know, people that is uh, serious about, you know, getting information out. That's what we're trying to do right now. We're not trying to um, really be, uh, you know, doctrine stringent. We just really want to include all of our people right now just to get them informed. So, you know, this is, this will be a, you know, a, a, just a good spot to seek out information. We do. We are operating from, you know, uh, biblically based. So it, everything that we do is inspired by the most high. So, um, but uh, we will be uh, creating more rooms coming up. Uh, I see Sister Brianna in, in, uh, um, in the crowd. Thank you for coming, sis. And we, we're going to be working with Sister Brianna and um, uh, uh, my, my lady, Aaliyah. Um, she's, uh, we're going to be putting together uh, some prep. Uh, classes for the sisters prepping for, you know, these times that we're coming in, you know, as, as Leonardo is about to speak on Jacob's trouble. Um, we also going to be getting, uh, getting out the information. We got a little uh, thing with uh brother Mike called um, uh, uh, mid mid morning um, brew blend basically. So it's basically like in a mid morning, get you a quick little cup of um, information and we'll be running that. Um, we're going to try to run that periodically or, you know, we try to, we're going to try to get it daily, but we're just starting off right now. But ping as many as you can to the room, and um, I'm going to turn it back over to Brother Leo. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Brother Ben. Um, the first thing I want to start with is the spiritual aspect, um, you know, because the Bible talks about faith and works. So you have a lot of naysayers um, that say, oh, you shouldn't prepare. Oh, you should. Uh, but we're going to see what the Bible says. And, um, you know, after that, you make up your own decision because whether you do, whether you personally decide to do or not has no bearing on whether I do or not, or whether King Ben does or not, or whether Mike does or not. So um, at the end of the day, um, when this really goes down, um, if you still decide not to, then, I mean, that's your business. I mean, I can't make you uh, do it, but um, I know there's a lot of um, apprehension because people say, oh, well, you don't have faith. And they'll throw out a couple of scriptures about having faith and say, you know, that applies to the situation we're in now. And it doesn't. So we're going to go to the first scripture they go to. I'm going to read this one. But in the meantime, uh, Brother Ben, if you can grab Hebrews 11 and uh, James 1 and 14. Uh, James chapter 1, verse 14. I'm going to go through these scriptures uh, as you're getting those. So this is the first um, scripture that they go to. This is Matthew chapter six, verse 25. Or this is one of the scriptures. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What ye shall eat, what shall ye drink, or what or nor yet for your body, what shall ye put on? Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not Neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are ye not much are ye not much better than they? Which of you can by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they to how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spend. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow's cast into the oven, 
shall he not much more clothe you? Clothe you? O ye of little faith. And see, they'll throw that in there to, to scare you as, as to why you shouldn't prepare. Therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Where all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father know that ye need of these things. But seek ye first in the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the tomorrow shall, shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day there is evil thereof. So they're going to say that scripture right there and say, they're going to read this passage and say, see, you're planning to prepare for Jacob's trouble by stocking food, water, or whatever. You have no faith, and for you to even think about tomorrow is evil. So let's go back to verse uh, 31. Therefore, take no thought. It doesn't say prepare. It says take no thought. Like, don't be concerned. Verse 34 reiterates that. Therefore, take no thought. It does not say do not prepare for a storm. OK, I mean, we just deal with that in Texas. A lot of empty shelves. OK, so taking this out of context, he's talking about the day to day provisions, food and clothes. As 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 his children, we should not be concerned with day to day. Those are provided for us. But as you as he shows us in the future what's going to happen, it'll be prudent and wise to prepare for that. So for brothers who say, or, you know, brothers and sisters, I've seen this both, that say, oh, using this scripture, therefore, you should only be worried about day to day. So you're telling me, let me get this straight. You're telling me you only go to the grocery store every day because you're only concerned about today. So when you go to the grocery store, you only grab enough food for that day. And then tomorrow, if you wake up, you praise the Lord and go back to the grocery store again. Absolutely not. Okay. So this is not what that's talking about. Because um, again, it says, take no thought. Now, again, should you be concerned for Jacob's trouble? Um, if you're living in sin and you're unrepentant, yeah, you should be very afraid. Um, the rest of us, I'm speaking that into existence, part of that number, the remnant. Um, no, no, I'm actually excited. Um, but because it's, it's the judgment of the Gentiles and it's our redemption coming near. Um, so brother Ben, can we get, um, with that, can we get brothers, uh, can we get Hebrews 11 and seven? Huh? This is the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse seven. By faith, Noah being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving no, of no, his- no. No, he just had faith. By which he didn't do anything. Prepared an ark for the saving. He didn't do anything. Con prepared an ark to the saving oh, okay. of his house. Prepared which, an ark. <laughs> the brother did something by faith. There's your spiritual. God showed him things not yet seen, and he did something to do what. Con, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteous, which is by faith. By faith. So his righteousness prepared. Now that fear, that's not talking about unbelief. That's, that's a different type of fear. That's the um, type of fear that gets you, get you into action. Same way you hear a hurricane is three days away, you're afraid. You get afraid, like, oh, man, it's going to be a big hurricane, but you you prepare. Now, that's not saying, like, oh, God's not going to deliver me. God's not going to save me. But, no, you go to the store. You get your bottle of water. You fill up your gas tanks. In this situation, Noah prepared an ark. He physically did something. Now, if Noah was listening to some of these people, he would, they would say, oh, no, 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 don't build an ark. Just have faith. Okay? No. Um, now, of course, he had instructions to build the ark, too. But just like you're going to have, just like we have instructions to prepare. And I'm going to show you that. Um, can we get James chapter one, verse 14? Con, this is the book of James chapter one and verse 14. But every man is tempted 
No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's 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 the wrong one. Um, this was, uh, I think, two. I think you're looking for two twenty. Yeah, two. Um, what profit, my brother? One second. I put the wrong one. Sorry. This is uh, yeah, James two and fourteen. My, my apologies. Con. This is the book of James, chapter two and verse fourteen. What doeth it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? Can faith only save him? And so that's what you hear from the uh, a lot of our brethren from the Christian church. Like, oh, you don't have to keep the commandments. Oh, you don't have to do any of that. Just have faith. Okay. Um, let's go down. Uh, keep reading. Con, verse 15. If a brother or sister be naked, and destitute of daily food, and mm -hmm. one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doeth profit? So you told him to, you told him to depart in faith. Brother, you have faith that you're warm and you have faith that you're that your stomach is full, but you didn't physically do anything. So you, uh, let's, let's go to verse 17. Con, verse 17. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. It is dead. It is a combination of both. It is, uh, it is both um, on a scale, on a balance. You have faith, and you have works. So you've seen um, Noah being moved with fear. He had faith. It says by faith. Hebrews 11 and 7. He had faith. And being moved with fear physically did something. Okay. Now, um, we're going to go to an example. This is uh, Genesis chapter 14. Um, no, no, I'm not Genesis 14. I'm sorry. This is Genesis 41. Verse 14. Uh, this is the story of uh, uh, story of Pharaoh. So Pharaoh and Joseph. Now we know the story. Um, God sent Pharaoh a dream, someone in a position of authority to do something to make to, to make the decision. Okay. He couldn't understand it. So he went to go, he got all the sorcerers, all the magicians, none of them could do it. Then the butler told him about uh, um, Joseph. Joseph comes and interprets the dream. Now let's start at um, let's start at verse thirty-two. Huh. This is Book of Genesis, chapter forty-one, and verse <clears throat> thirty-two. And for that, Salakia, and for that, the dream was doubted unto Pharaoh twice. So Salakia, Salakia, mm -hmm. and for that, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by Yahweh, by, by God, and God will surely bring it to pass. So he was told this dream twice. Now we saw the one with the cows, if you read the chapter, and then the one with the, uh, the corn. Now, um, verse 33. Now here's Joseph, here's, uh, here's, here's the instructions that Joseph gives. Huh. Now. Therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plentiness years. Plentiness years. Right. And let and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of, of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. Okay, stop right there. So Joseph had faith that this dream was coming to pass. He said, surely you received two dreams. Surely it's going to happen and it's going to come to pass. Now that's his faith. He believed in this dream was coming to pass. This is the works that you're seeing, physical action of storing of food. 
Okay, for a famine. Okay, um, let's go down to verse. Uh, let's go down to uh, verse 49. And uh, I want to make a few points on this one. Go ahead. Huh. Verse 49. And Joseph gathered corn. Stop. As Salah. And, and Joseph, no, stop right there. And Joseph gathered corn. He wasn't arguing. He wasn't bickering. He wasn't um, watching porn, messing, messing around on TV. He did what? And Joseph gathered corn mm. as, the, as okay. the sand of the sea. And of Slocket, very much until he left numbering, for it was without number. Con. So Joseph, in this seven years, gathered corn. He was physically doing something. Now, here's the thing that you notice. I want you guys to read this, uh, this whole account, even, even until the children of Israel, when they get there, because this is something in, important that happens. This famine was not only unique to Egypt. This famine was across the entire world. Every place had a famine. Okay. So if every place had a famine, that means every place had years of plenty. So they were not wise to survive a famine. Now, be, now part of it, to be fair, is because they didn't know that you know a famine was coming. They didn't have this information. I'm sure if they had this information, they would have planned accordingly. And we know um, to the story, it was all for the purpose of uh, bringing the children of Israel into uh, Egypt to save them. So, and also, you know, to unite uh, Joseph. So, with this, you now the question is: We have a warning, okay? We know what's coming. We have an, a, the Most High has to have enough graces on us to say, "Hey, I'm sending famine, pestilence. You got." Um, all the evils I'm sending a sword on the land. Okay. Now let's go to, um, I can read this one. Um, I'm going to get uh, Second Ezra. Uh, I'm going to Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 21. Um, ben or Mike, if you could grab uh, verse uh, 67. Um, so this is, now this is going to, now this is directly precept with um, what we just read in Genesis. Okay. So Everywhere had the famine, so it's fair to assume that everywhere had the seven years of plenty, okay? Now, the famine, now this is, this is the thing. The famine was so bad that people sold what they have for food, okay? And after that became bad, they sold themselves for food. So, hey, we're going to work for you, uh, Pharaoh, for X amount of time. Just feed us. So that's how bad starvation gets, when you sell everything you have, the money's useless. That talks about that in, in Genesis 40, 41. The money became useless. So what does it mean what, when the money became useless? Um, and in situations like this, you're going to have, or we're going to have, hyperinflation. So hyperinflation, just uh, by definition, is when the prices increase 50% within a year. Now, no one's going to, going to the store and doing math, so... Um, just an example of hyperinflation is when a loaf of bread is $20, okay? Or uh, a carton or a gallon of milk is $35 or $50, okay? Once hyperinflation kicks in, your money is worthless, okay? Because it is the prices of, um, the prices of uh, goods and services have become so high that no one could afford them. No one, would, no one could reasonably afford $15 loaf of bread and $35 carton of milk. Okay. So you'll see that in Genesis 41, that the money became uh, useless. Okay. People were selling what they had. People became to sell themselves to the government for food. Doesn't that sound familiar? Okay. Now here's our warning. This is second Ezra chapter 16, verse 21. Behold, victual shall be so good, cheap upon the earth that they think to themselves to be in good case. Even then shall evils grow upon the earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. So we're, we're I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not giving a time frame. I'm just using the, the Genesis 41 as an example. 
we're ne- we're we're nearing the end of seven years of plenty. Okay. So much so that people think uh, yeah, things are good. And yeah, gas is kind of creeping up, but uh, food's kind of creeping up. Uh. So that lets you know, like, um, evils have been growing upon the earth, okay? And the seven years of plenty is almost done. Not, and again, I'm not saying this to try to scare you. Not at all. Like, I guess if, if you're unprepared, a good fear, like, start preparing your ark um, spiritually first and most importantly, and then physically. But no, I mean, yeah, we're almost done. I mean, just looking at, I mean, when the Mike gets into the news, um, I'm going to segue into a financial aspect of it, just financial news will, um, and give you some information about that. But no, there's, there's no way the U.S. dollar is about to become very, very worthless to where we're in a state of hyperinflation. Now, people are about to do some strange things for food, okay? Um, now. Um, so now that we have that, let's go into how to prepare spiritually. So, uh, again, uh, welcome to the room. Uh, if you're taking notes, um, or you have any questions, just keep them to the end. We'll invite you up to ask questions about the coming famine, uh, coming destruction, how to prepare spiritually and physically. Now, uh, just some background. So people, people, people say, um, um, oh, you know, America's going to be destroyed by a thermonuclear fire, which is very true. Um, but before that, you're going to have, um, America will be invaded. I mean, that's just plain point, plain and simple. Um, so yeah, you will have troops on the ground. Um, but again, do not fear. Um, we're going to go into how to prepare spiritually. So uh, this is, uh, brother, you have um, Second Ezra uh, chapter 16, verse uh, 67. Con, I got it. Look, uh, this is Second Ezra chapter sixteen and verse sixty-seven. Behold, God Himself is the judge. Fear Him. Fear leave Him. Con, fear. Leave off from your sins, and forget your iniquities. To meddle no more with them forever. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. Okay, so that first one, behold, God himself is a judge. Fear him. Don't fear the government. Don't fear FEMA. Don't fear whatever else name they got, Illuminati, NWO, whatever. Fear him. That's the one you should fear. So, and he tells you, that's the first thing you got to do. Fear him. Second thing. Leave off from your sins, okay? Um, let that stuff go. Whatever it is you're struggling with, get rid of it now. Well, I've been struggling with this. For, I've been struggling with this for 20 years. Okay, well, you really need to go into prayer and fasting, okay? And forget your iniquities to meddle with them no more forever. So this is not the, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm forgiven for my sins, but you kind of like a dog going back to its vomit. No, 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 no. You cannot meddle with them no more forever. Let it go. Whatever it was, whatever it is, get rid of it. Move on forever. And if you do that, you fear him. Leave off your sins. Forget your iniquities. Now, that forget your iniquities. Don't let it come into a negative um, condemnation. Okay? We all have done stuff that, we, that if we think on, it's going to, you know, bring us to condemnation. Conviction is good. Condemnation is not. Okay? You've been forgiven. Move on. Don't even go back there to meddle with them. Don't even dabble in it. Don't call that person that you let go. Don't even try to slide in DMs. Don't even go to that, that porn website. Don't even meddle. Okay. Forever. You do those things. Next thing is going to happen. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. That includes the FEMA camps. That includes um, famine. That includes uh, when uh, this place is invaded. That includes thermonuclear fire. That includes all of that. All trouble. Now, preparing spiritually, the faith part. You have to have faith that what you said, that what the Most High said in this scripture is true. So Most High, you said 
If I fear you, leave off from my sins, forget my iniquities, meddle with them no more forever, then you are going to lead me forth and deliver me from all trouble. You have to have some, some, some bold confidence in that. So um, I'm going to uh, pull up Ecclesiastic, Ecclesiastes. Uh, if one of you brothers can grab Sirach, uh, Sirach chapter 2, verse 10. Um, here's something else. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 5 and 6. Whoso keep the commandment shall feel no evil thing. And a wise man's heart discerns both time and judgment. So a wise man knows what time it is. Okay. We know that the hour is late. We're not trying to go to All-Star Weekend and, you know, pretend like we're somebody or pretend like we have money. Like we know the hour is late. Okay. So you're keeping the commandments. You shall feel no evil thing. And, and the thing is, I'm going to get into this a little bit later. You have to have a sense of boldness with these scriptures. Like we're going to get into that. Like you can't, you cannot be uh, afraid or fearful. Like, eh, yeah, I got a little faith. Eh. No, you have to, when you quote these scriptures, you have to, you have to speak with a level of boldness and confidence. So um, the same way you, when you go to bed at night, you have, at least I hope you do, um, you have a high level of confidence that the sun is going to rise the next day. You're not thinking about it. It's not a thought. It's not, oh, I wonder, you're getting up early, you're checking, you're not doing none of that, okay? There's a several other, there's a comfort in that confidence, okay? And that's what you have to have with these, uh, with these scriptures and, you know, who you are um, as a child of the Most High God. So uh, can I get uh, Sirach chapter 2? Con, I got you. Uh, this is the book of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus or Sirach chapter 2. And you wanted a... Uh, verse 10. Verse 10, Con. Look at the generations of old and see. Did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Mm-hmm. Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that call, called upon him? Amen. Now, look at, look at the generations of old. Look at the three Hebrew boys. Look at Daniel. Look at Joshua. Look at David. Okay, now you do see some examples of some of us being martyred, okay? Um, but vast majority of those who feared in the Lord and was confounded. None of them were confounded. None were forsaken. Okay. Um, verse 11. Con, for the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering and very, very pitiful. And forgiveth sins and sa and saveth in time of affliction. Saves in the time of affliction. He does not leave you in the time of affliction. Now, we've all been in some hard times. Now, that was for our chastisement or our refinement, just depending on the situation. So sometimes we think we're going through hard times because we did something wrong. And... If we're being honest with ourselves, we know what we did wrong, okay? Like, if you're being chastised for sin, like, you kind of know, okay? Like, let's be, let's be honest. It's the times when we're being what appears to be chastisement, like, wait a minute, I didn't do anything. Like, what the heck's going on? Like, nah, well, well, the thing is, you're, that's not the fact that you did something wrong. It's the fact that you're doing something right. And that's the, that's the uh, time of refinement. So, but even then, you know, he saves in the time of affliction. So um, that's, that's, I'm just quoting off the top of my head, Psalms 118. Um, the Lord has chastened me sore, but he has not given me over into death. Okay. Um, can I get verse uh, 12 of the same uh, Ecclesiasticus? Con, con. Now here's a warning. Go ahead. Con, woe be be to the fearful hearts. So I can read that again. Woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that goeth to ways. Woe to the fearful hearts. You cannot be afraid. Now, 
I'm assuming and I hope that you had some experiences with the Lord at this point and um, that, you know, you can look back at that, at his track record, which is trod and true um, that, you know, hey, he, he's held me. Yeah, it probably wasn't saved me the way I wanted to be saved or, you know, um, that chastisement or refinement was uncomfortable, but he took care of me. So you got to have that confidence that he's going to take care of you now. You cannot have fearful hearts and faint hands. OK, and you notice right here in verse 12. It says fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that goes two ways. So you could say to yourself, wait a minute, I'm not. I'm not sinning. I just, you know, I'm, I'm a little shaky in my faith, but I'm not sinning. But somehow fearful hearts and faint hands are in the same sentence as a sinner that goes two ways. Now we're going to get into that. Why? Um, can I get um, verse 13? Con, verse 13. Woe unto him that is faint hearted. For Woe he unto him that is faint hearted. Con. Salakia, woe unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore shall he not be defended. Oh, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, wait a second. Woe unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believes not. Therefore shall he not be defended. The Lord is not going to defend you if you do not have the faith and confidence, I mean, you know, when you have faith, you have confidence. Like, for instance, um, Noah, his faith, well, I have faith and I have confidence that this is going to happen. Let me prepare an ark, okay? But it says, woe to him that is faint-hearted, for he believes not. So you can't be faint-hearted and believe. So if you're like, oh, Lord, I'm so, are you really going to save us? Are you really, no, for he shall not be defended. And, and Salakia King, if I, if I can. Uh, just sure. when you see that word woe in the Bible, that word means destruction. Just to put some emphasis on that. If you look up that word, the, the definition woe means destruction in a biblical uh, um, um, uh, definition. Wow, con, con, that's true. So destruction unto him that is faint hearted, for he believes not. Therefore shall he not be defended. Now, the thing is, now the believe not, for he believes not. Now, we know this is... Um, this is a, uh, you, you believe that Jacob's troubles here, you believe it's going, it's, you believe the fame is coming, but you, your belief is not that, your belief is, is he really gonna save us? You can't have that. Uh, verse 14. Con, woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? Okay, now we're going to precept that. Um, this is Revelations chapter 21, verse 7 and 8. For he that overcometh shall inherit all things. I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone which is the second death. So the fearful and unbelieving are in the same category as the abominable murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers. And you're saying, wait a minute, oh, I just, I just, I just, I was a little shaky in my faith. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a murderer, but all y'all get that same punishment. So it is very serious for, for salvation in the physical and you know, to avoid the second death. Um, that um, you have faith and you, you have a boldness with this faith. So um, let me get this precept. Uh, this is uh, Psalms chapter 37. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and read it. Psalms chapter 37, verse 39. But salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. There you go. Okay. So again, you have to have a certain level of boldness 
um, with this. Um, what's about to happen or what's happening now, you have to have some, some of the boldness is my Lord is going to do what he says he's going to do. Um, I'm gonna grab this one real quick. Um, and then we're going to get into the, uh, the preparing in the natural. Okay. So this is, um, let me get it real quick. This is Isaiah chapter 43. Okay. So again, take confidence in the scriptures. Like this is the Lord talk, talking. This is not, you know, the, the prophets just writing some poetry for, you know, some people that might read 3,000 years later and say, oh yeah, that's nice. No, this is, this is your, this is your survival God. So you, you'll hear that a lot. People talk about survival gods. For us, for the uh, sons of Jacob, this is our survival God, okay? These scriptures, this Bible, this text, okay? So this is Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1. But now thus says the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. That is a commandment. For I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou pass, passest through the waters, I, be, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopian Sheba, Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for that life. So if it comes between the children of Israel, you, and the other nations, he's going to kill them in an instant. Fear not. This is verse 5. Here, here's it again. So it must be something to this if we see scripture after scripture that says, fear not. Don't be afraid. Don't be far. Don't, don't be, don't be faint-hearted. Can't have weak hands. So as you can see, people during this time, even us today, have a problem with fear. And um, as it also says, you know, faith. So it said again, verse five, fear not, I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Every one, every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed he, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let the nations be gathered together. Let the people be assembled. Among, who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified. Or let them hear and say, it is true. Ye are my witnesses, say the Lord. Okay, so we witnessed all his salvation. We're about to witness it again. Okay, verse 10, ye are my witnesses, say of the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that, that ye may know and believe me and understand I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am Yahweh, and beside me there is no Savior. Okay, so again, we will be taken care of during this time. Um, that's a, now, here's the thing with being taken care of. Now, we're going to get into the physical of, uh, with that. Um, now, your current level of comfort, you know, the American diet, 2,500 calories a day, that might, you're going to have to sacrifice and make some adjustments, okay, when the famine hits. Now, you can store as much as you want, and that may um, prolong, but you're going to be taken care of and, you know, uh, one thing, one thing that will um, piss off the Most High God is being ungrateful and um, uh, unthankful. Okay, so um, this is uh, Psalms thirty-seven. Okay, the Lord knows the days of the upright. Psalms thirty-seven, eighteen. For the Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time and in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. 
Okay, again, this is another promise. Okay, we're going to be taken care of. But you have to have some boldness. Like, it doesn't matter what you see in the news. It doesn't matter, like, oh, you see that movie? Uh, they're planning to lock us down and uh, round us up on FEMA camps. Uh. No, man, hell, man, fuck that. Like, <laughs> it doesn't, like, it really, whether, whether the Lord takes you into a FEMA camp, allows you to be taken to a FEMA camp, he's going to bring you out from that FEMA camp. Whether you're inside your house and it's time to go, it's time to go. Like, you'll be taken care of. Like, that's one thing. So you see this, okay? You see how the Lord works in terms of fear not. Don't be afraid. Um, oh, yeah, sure. One second. Um, one second. Fear not. Um, fear not. Don't be afraid. Now, Satan and his army, they know these scriptures. They know them, they know them almost better than we do. Um, let's say they do know them better than we do. Uh, but when it says fear not, so 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 they're looking at this and saying, okay, how do we get these people for, out from under God's protection? Okay, they're keeping the commandments, they're doing the, the righteous acts. Ah, uh, we gotta we gotta scare them. So then you hear these news reports. Uh, we got dark winter coming, and everyone starts going crazy about dark winter. Now I'm not saying like don't watch the news and like oh okay they said that, but I'm back in these scriptures. I'm memorizing Psalms. I'm doing the things like, you know, God told Noah, I'm sending, I'm sending rain to, to destroy the earth. After that, nothing else in the world mattered to Noah in terms of what news is going on. Like, okay, so they know if they can get you afraid, they can get you out from under the protection of the Most High God. So what they say in the news, it's information. Take it with a grain of salt. But that's not going to stop. They're not, it's not going to stop prophecy at all. OK, uh, you know, so with that, um, you know, I hope that was um, helpful spiritually, but you got to you, you got to start practicing, um, um, practicing fasting, practicing um, keeping the commandments, memorizing these scriptures that the ones that are, you know, talk about having faith and I got you. Don't worry about it. Uh, the ones I quoted are really good. Psalms 37. Psalms 91 is a good one, um, but that is the things that you have to um, get in your heart. Now, in terms of preparing spiritually and physically, spiritually is way more important, okay? I'm just going to say it off the bat. If you don't have this, the spirit, spiritual down, you can have all the guns and food and, you know, bunkers and all that stuff in the world. It's not going to save you, okay? So um, with that, um, let's go into the works part um if there's anything you want to add uh king ben um with the works i mean not the works but just something i added um and i'm going to uh, before before he does that let me um let me or him or mike bring something out this is why you want to prepare physically okay i'm going to this is isaiah chapter 20 um no this is isaiah chapter 26 um isaiah chapter 26 uh, start at verse 20 Okay, now we know the most high God is sending the famine, the sword, the destruction, the pestilence. He's sending Iran, China, Russia. We know that. Now, you have to ask yourself, when um, that really goes down, do you really want to be at Walmart, you know, trying to make, make a rat, you know, fast grab to, gra to grab some stuff? No, you do not. So this is Isaiah chapter 26, verse 20. Come, my people. Enter into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be past. For behold, the Lord cometh at his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth shall also disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So when this really goes down, now when it's time to leave your house, you're going to know the most high God according to 2 Ezra 16 and 67 He's going to lead you forth. But when that initial, when that first ballistic missile hits, you want to be inside your house. You do not want to be at, oh, well, I heard New York's getting invaded. Let me go run to Walmart right quick. I assure you, it's going to be a mad panic. And people ain't paying for stuff. People are not checking out. It's going to be mass chaos, okay? So with that, um, um, before I go into the natural, uh, King Ben or Mike, is there anything you wanted to add? Yeah, I got a quick precept. Um, sure. This is uh, the book of Jeremiah, 
chapter 30 and verse 7, and it reads, At last, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it, right? And we know that that day to be nothing like nothing like any other day, right? As pursuant to um, Daniel, uh, Daniel the twelfth chapter, right? Uh, I believe that's verse verse one, right? It's mm-hmm. no day like it, as you know. So we know that we're preparing for something that our ancestors didn't experience, right? So we're not going to go into the whole doctrine that we are our, our ancestors, but we are preparing for something that has never been experienced by no other nation, right? So this is going to be a time like no other, but only way we can prepare for it is spiritually. That, you know, as the brother Leo is saying, we got to be spiritually prepared, have your bag spiritually packed, right? And I yield. Con, con. Yeah, the spiritual... Um, uh... Spirit, spiritual is way more important than the physical. Physical is important. I mean, you, you've had a warning, it's important. Um, but it's, uh, the spirit is way more um, important. Now with that, um, so here's the thing. I'm gonna go over a couple of numbers. As, as, as when, he, when it says there shall be none like it in terms of that day is great. Here's a couple of numbers to consider. So we have 350 million Americans in the continental US, that's not counting um, Alaska and Hawaii, about 350 million, okay? 50% of that is, um, are on prescription drugs for mental health problems. So you're talking anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, bipolarism, 50% of that 350 million Americans are on prescription medicine for mental health problems. What do you think is going to happen when the food supply goes down and people can't get their medicine? Okay. Now, another number. 100 million firearms are, are registered in the U.S. So that means 100 million at least. That's, that, that's legal. Okay. 100 million Americans have legal uh, purchase firearms. Okay. One billion rounds of ammunition are sold in the U.S. every year. Now, those numbers are going to make this place into an absolute war zone when hyperinflation kicks in and this place is invaded or a more dangerous pestilence kicks in. Okay, so um, in terms of your food supply, this is what this is. This is the thing um, you want to look at. So right now. um, Take, a, take an accounting of your house, just mentally what you have in the house right now, food, water, just do food and water. Okay, if the banks were to close tomorrow morning, no more food trucks were coming, everything absolutely came to a halt. Your cards didn't work. How much food could you and your family survive on um, with just what you have right now in your house, okay? So that'll give you a range of, how prepared you are or how prepared you are not. And whatever the answer is, it's okay. So this is why we're doing this to get you to where you need to be or where you should be, okay? So if you have like, oh, three days worth of food, like if uh, I have three days, then yeah, you're in trouble, okay? Um, But this is where we're starting now. So you wanna have a minimum, absolute minimum of uh, three weeks, three weeks of worth of food, okay? That's 21 days of food that you actually eat. So now, I mean, you see on on the internet of these emergency food supplies that are, they have these huge totes, you know, it's 30 uh, 30 years shelf life and it it feeds a family of 17 for 30 years. It's, you know, this big in bulk stuff. Here's the problem with that. Um, If you buy that and you taste that food and you don't like it, you just bought. It. I mean, you still bought it. So that's the thing. Like, I wouldn't buy that stuff um, unless you tried it and you like it. And you know, if you tried it and you liked it, fine, whatever. But I personally wouldn't buy it. I bought uh, food that I like, food that I eat, food that is easy to cook, food that I'm aware of. Um, because um, and the thing is, so with that, um, that's what you want to do: buy food that you tried 
food that you like and food that's easy to prepare. So for instance, I bought a bunch of uh, instant potatoes. So it's the one pack at, you get them at Walmart. They were like 10 for a dollar, but those days are long gone. Now they're like a dollar each or 80 cents. So it just boil some water, put the pack in there and you're gonna cook it. I mean, that you have potatoes, okay, mashed potatoes. Okay, so something like that, scallops, whatever it is you eat, okay? So you're not preparing for me. You're not preparing for, you know, this and that. Now, that brings another question. When I say three week supply of food you eat, I know we all have family members that we're trying to warn and they think we're crazy and no, nothing's gonna happen. You know, the God blesses America and blah, blah, blah. So you have to make a decision. Are you going to feed them if slash when they come to your house? Now, if you're leaving, now if you're living with them and they don't care, still prepare for them because they're gonna thank you when it goes down and you live with them. Okay, you're not, you don't wanna turn into a fight or, you know, start, start a shootout because you got your food stored in another room and you know they're trying to get it. I mean, unless you want to, that's, that's, that's between you, that's between you and them. But um, you have to make a decision, like for those that come over your house, the family like, oh yeah, I know brother Mike was talking about this. I know he has food. Mike has to make a decision whether I'm gonna open that door or not. Now, if he does open that door, then he should plan for um, um, more, okay? So that three week supply is typically for a family of, you know, three or four, uh, husband, wife, couple of kids, okay? Four people. Um, so food that's easy to prepare, okay? Now the instant potatoes, I just need heat and water, okay? So which brings into the, um, and that's another thing, you wanna mix it up, go back, to, go back to the food. You wanna mix it up. If, you, if, I, if, I, if I just eat off the instant potatoes, you know, the body is going to experience what, what is called food fatigue. Like, I'm sick of eating this. I know there's no other option, but I'm not going to eat anything. So your body's going to actually start rejecting it if you're just having the same thing. So mix it up. Get the, get the instant potatoes, get the instant pasta, get the canned chicken, uh, canned tuna, uh, if you feel comfortable, or the canned salmon. They have that. Um, you know, mix it up a little bit. And you can, you know, mix it in or whatever. Canned vegetables, stuff like that. Now, those things have a high shelf life. OK, there because it has preservatives in it. So the shelf life is typically two to three years. You can look at it. It's about two years. So, you know, if you do stock up, you can just rotate it as the time gets closer to expiration. Now, here's the thing with eating expired foods um, in the can. Um, the way to tell if a if a can, if a food, if, if a canned food um, is contaminated, if you grab your can item and you try to tap the top of the can, if you don't hear a clicking noise, that means it's, it's completely sealed. There's no air in it. So if you hear a clicking noise, that means there's air inside and there's air inside or, I mean, outside air, um, then it's com com uh, possibly be contaminated. So that's just in case if we're out during Jacob's Trouble and we find some old cans or whatever. Um, if, as long as it's like you can't you press the top and it doesn't make that clicking noise, it's still good. Okay. Now with expired food, only thing that happens, unless you're talking about milks and eggs, stuff like that, or you know, um, it just starts to lose its starts to lose its flavor. Okay, it starts to lose its you know that initial um, flavor. You're not going to die from poisoning because you ate a you know a, a can of green beans that expired two weeks ago. That's not you know, it's not going to happen. Okay, so um, now with the food to prepare, you want to have a, a way to prepare it. So with that, you want to ensure that if the power is out, I'm not, not ensure, but if the power is out, like we had here in Houston, um, um, I had a Coleman, Coleman, that's coal, like um, J. Cole, Coleman, Coleman stove um, that you can get one with butane or propane. It doesn't matter. Um, I just broke out my propane, my uh, butane stove. I put it on my, 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 uh, my kitchen counter and we were cooking. So when the power went out, our quality of living beside the, besides the excessive cold, which was everyone had to deal with that, our quality of living did not diminish because I was prepared. Um, now we didn't have water for a few days, but other than that, yeah, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to experience some level of uncomfort. During Jacob's trouble, you're not gonna have a hot shower for some days. You're not going to be able to brush your teeth for some days. You can, we'll get into that and in other lessons on how to 
maintain hygiene because that's very important. Um, you know, brothers are talking about, I want multiple wives. So if God gives you multiple wives during Jacob's trouble, are you going to know how to feed them? We're going to get into that um, later. So with that, um, you want to have uh, your quality of life to maintain as best you can, okay? The best you can. Now, you know, um, if you have more income to where you can do more, that's great. You can get a so whole solar panel and system, fine, whatever. You know, and that's the thing. That's one thing very important. So I know when we start talking about this prepping and everything, from what I hear, a lot of pushback is a lot of people are afraid. That's why they say, no, 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 you just got to have faith. They're afraid because they don't have the money to prepare. Now, here's the thing, just from my personal experience, the Lord is not going to bless you with more until you can show gratefulness and proper stewardship for what you already have, for what he's already given you. Okay, just a quick uh, analogy. David did not become king until he could show that he could watch sheep diligently, okay? A lion and a bear had a sheep, one sheep in his mouth, and he fought that lion and bear to get that one sheep back. So if you can show proper stewardship over the small things, just from my experience, I'm not quoting scripture or anything, just from my personal experience, he's going to, he, he's going to trust you with something larger, okay? So, for example, like, oh, I can't, I can't store two weeks. So if the Lord gives you $20 and you go trick it off and go buy a bunch of junk that has no use in the, the, the coming time, why would he trust you with $200 to go buy a generator or a battery bank? So take that $20, be diligent, say, hey, Lord, I, you showed us what's coming. You set up, you know, you, you, you're given enough word for us to prepare or enough examples from the prophets and people in the past to prepare. I'm going to trust you. Like I'm going to, I'm, I'm part of my faith is me preparing. So when you go to the store as your normal grocery shopping routine, just grab a couple extra cans and throw it in, throw it in the basket. And then when you get home, just put it in your closet and forget about it and just keep doing that and doing that and doing that. And very quickly, you will have three weeks of supply. Now three weeks is the minimum. Okay. Just keep building from there. Get a, get an extra box of uh, ramen noodles. Just throw it in the back of the closet. Okay. So, um, again, proper stewardship of what you already have. You, you've, you got to use your resources wisely. You got people going to All-Star Weekend and then begging to, you know, begging for GoFundMe. I mean, gosh, it's, it's sad, man. It's really sad. You got people buying PS5s. Now, now, again, if you can afford a PS5 and you say, hey, Brother Leo, I got six months of food, water, ammunition, and concubines stored up. I'm good. And I'm keeping the commandments and I have faith in the Messiah. If you're doing that, then fine. Yeah, go ahead and buy your PS5. But what I see is brothers buying PS5s and all this other junk, but they're freezing and don't have a, a space heater when a, when a winter storm comes. That's a very alarming problem with our people um, during this time. Okay, so again, just proper stewardship. I mean, budget your money. Um, do you really need that Netflix? I'm sure someone you know has a password that you can borrow. I mean, do you really need, you know, that that Pandora subscription. I mean, you can get free music anywhere. So just, you know, use, be, cut back on your expenses and put that extra savings to stocking up. Okay. So just a quick recap on the food, minimum three weeks, just add extra as you go to the store, food you like, food you eat, and food for your household. So again, if you're going to buy extra for your family who doesn't live with you, but you know they're probably going to come to your house because they're, you know, irresponsible and don't believe in what you're talking in the scriptures. Then if you're going to buy extra for them. Then that's your decision. OK, if you're going to shut the door and not let them in, that's your decision. OK, the parable of the 10 wise versions. They said, no, not so unless we don't have enough for you and us, but go buy from them that sell. OK. So go buy, like, no, you go purchase. We, we were diligent, we, brought, we bought and brought extra, okay? So again, that's your decision. Um, you know, we're gonna go through a few scenarios and other lessons about if this, if this situation happens, what do you do? I wanna hear y'all's answers. It'll be a very um, thought provoking uh, exercise and game. Um, and Salaki, if I could. Sure. Um, just let me back in on what the brother Leo is saying, you know, for anybody that uh, is familiar with the um, 
the the parable of the talents and uh pursuant to matthew 25 you know you know the most high is looking for what you're gonna do with what you have you know what I'm saying how what do you go what returns you're gonna bring back from what he give you you know what I'm saying it's not so much about the abundance of you have what you have but how you use that in a, in 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 sparingly you know what I'm saying if you are making um you know let's just say you are making a, a few hundred dollars a week you should be trying to see if you can live on you know you know half of that you know what I'm saying and putting something away you know, and, and stacking up, you know, for these hard times, you know, um, um, it's, it's like this, this stimulus, you know, they, they, they approved the stimulus we know, uh, today and it will be sent out again. And what is our people usually going to do? They're going to go out and buy a bunch of folly, you know, and have no money the next week, you know? So as we see these times wax and worse, you, you know, you should be, you know, you should be diligent. You should be, you know, you should use discernment with what's happening right now, with what's been happening. Don't think because things are starting to open back up, it's time to go chill. It's time to go party. The most high is looking to see who is going to be like those servants, who's going to be like those faithful servants that doubled what he gave them, you know, and, 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 and not look like, you know, it's, it's, it's time to relax. You know, we always got to stay on watch, you know, Con, con. That's very important. I forgot all about that. It was a stimulus check. Man, y'all, I mean, if you guys are, you know, y'all getting one, man, please use it wisely. I'm not saying go out and buy an exact $1,400 generator. I'm not saying that, but man, put some away for food and water. We're going to get to water next real quick, but man, be wise. I mean, it's, I'm not saying I was always wise and the Lord had to humble me that very, very harshly to be wise with money and respect it. Don't be emotional, but respect it. So just because you got that $1,400 check and you go blow it thinking, oh, they're gonna pass more stimulus, man, that's, that's not true. That's not, that's not guaranteed. So man, just be wise. Um, with water, okay? Now, water is one of the most underappreciated resources we have, okay? We have running water. We don't even think about how much gallons of water we spend. So the average human, um, not the average human, the average American probably goes through about 10 gallons of water a day. And that's with drinking, cooking, washing dishes, flushing the toilet, uh, washing your face, taking a shower. That's a lot of water, okay? So we have, a, we have an overabundance. Now with that, um, you're going to need water for those same very things. So now with, uh, with the water, you could start storing um, um, extra cases of bottled water. You could, um, I, post, I posted on Instagram, the water bricks. Those are good options. So just go to Amazon and type in water bricks. Those are five gallons or 10 gallons. If you live in an apartment and you don't have a lot of space, you can kind of stack, they're stackable. So you can like rotate them and stack them on top of each other or put them under your bed. Um, they hold about five gallons at a time. Um, so um, if, you know, if you got more land, um, I suggest buying a, or you have more space, I would suggest buying a 50 gallon storage container. I mean, again, before the pandemic, those were very cheap, um, very cheap. I mean, they were just giving them away. Now they're went up to, about, I think they're probably like $70. So with that, that's 50 gallons of water that you could, you know, use for, Cleaning, I mean, showering, washing dishes, because again, we didn't have water, um, but I, um, st I, I, I had a few of those five gallon ones from like the Ozarka, like the little water fountain or whatever. Um, they're very cheap. They're like $13 at Walmart. And then if you bring in the, the empty one to refill it, it's like six bucks. So I had a couple of those and, um, you know, we were fine. Um, I did buy one of the 50 gallon ones, but um, again, that was like years ago. So water is very underappreciated and we're about to be very humbled in having access to warm water, hot water, cold water here. We're all, all everyone, you know, again, during Jacob's trouble, you're not going to have, you know, uh, two or three hot showers every day. It's just not realistic, especially what's, what has been predicted. Okay. Through the scriptures. Now. Um, so with water, um, with that, uh, so here's the thing. If, you, if you're going to collect rainwater, you want to make sure before you drink it or cook with it, you want to filter it first 
and then um, um, boil it. And then once you, once you reach boiling point, then it's safe to consume. Uh, still be a little, don't go overboard, just try and test it out, okay? Um, so, oh, my bad, I gotta go back real quick. So with the food, uh, with, the, with, the, with the propane tanks, uh, those are ways to cook it. So just grab a couple extra propane tanks and butane cans, they're, they're still affordable. You can get them on Amazon, you can get them at Walmart. Make sure you have a good amount of those because you're gonna need to boil the water or if you're gonna use your grill or whatever. Um, but here's the thing, here's the thing with cooking and food. If, uh, so I'm telling you right now, this is what's going to happen. So let's say we have a cyber attack. Okay. We're going to get into the difference. We're going to get into the difference between cyber attacks and EMPs. There's a little subtle difference. Um, if we get a cyber attack to where the power goes out the first couple of days, everyone in your neighborhood is going to be barbecuing. They're going to do it. It's going to be an excuse not to go to work. Everyone's going to think it's a big ass game. So again, this cyber attack is assuming there's no boots on the ground invasion or no bombs. Let's just say it's a cyber attack. So um, people are gonna think it's a big ass game. They're gonna think it's a big ass party. People are gonna, people are gonna be barbecuing. Everyone's gonna smell, have the smell of barbecue for about three to four days, okay? Day five and day seven, day 14, when they didn't hear, like the, the smell of barbecue is gone and all the food is gone and ran out and spoiled um, and you're still cooking, Everyone in your neighborhood is going to have very heightened. Uh, uh, everyone's going to have very heightened senses, so you want to be discreet on how you cook, because again, if you're just on the front porch and you're cooking uh, while it's day fourteen with no power outage, you're going to have some very unwanted guests asking, "Why do you still have food?" So again, be discreet. Um, um, now, if you live in an apartment and you have a balcony, you got to be discreet. So I would, I mean, for me. If I was still living in my apartment, I would set up a uh, kind of like a little tent or whatever, so no one can really see what's going on, like directly into my house or whatever. But I mean, people are going to get smart. I mean, they're going, you know, three to four days without food. Their senses are going to get heightened. Every little sound is going to get aware. So um, be smart. And so that's why that's and that's why I would suggest the propane and the butane because the butane you can cook indoors. Just open a window. And, you know, the smell would dissip dissipate enough to where people aren't, aren't aware of who's cooking where, you know, because a barbecue grill, smoke goes up, everyone sees, you know, who's cooking, okay? So um, the butane, we cooked it indoors, it was fine, no one died of carbon, carbon monoxide poisoning or we, it didn't even go off. Um, so uh, that's why you want to have propane, that's why I suggest propane and butane over a wood grill or a charcoal grill, just because the smoke, you have to cook that outside and it's gonna draw lots of attention. So um, that's just that. So uh, with cooking, that's very important to have, have cook, cooking options. And with water, you want to have enough water. I mean, don't overestimate how much water you, uh, I mean, don't underestimate how much water uh, you use. We use quite a bit in this country, okay? As humans, like we just do. Okay, so uh, get the water bricks. You can get those on Amazon. When you go to Walmart or Target or whatever, get those five-gallon uh, water things from um, that Ozarka has that you see in the office buildings or whatever. Those are cheap um, or affordable. Uh, just get a couple of those, stack them up now. And also with water, if you just happen to run out of all your water, hey, Brother Leo, it's day 75 during Jacob's Trouble. You told me to get these water bricks and I ran out. F you. Okay, just, just take a breath, relax. Go to your, um, go to your, um, what is that? Your water heater, okay? Go to your water heater. Your water heater has about 50 gallons of stored water in there, okay? So you can get a, get a hose and get a tap and turn on your water heater. Like, turn, like there's a little faucet, like a little knob. Turn on that faucet and you will um, um, get, that's, 50 more gallons that you have in your house already. That's already stored, so you don't have to worry about it. But now, when you use that water from that water heater, you want to um, filter out the first couple of ounces, okay? The first couple of ounces you want to filter out because a lot of the, in Houston, we have hard water. So a lot of the sediments are at the bottom. So when we run our shower, just a little bit of the sediments come out. So um, you want to filter that water and then boil it, and then you'll be good to go. So that's 50 gallons stored. So even if we're out walking 
the streets or the wilderness or wherever during Jacob's trouble, know in your head that every apartment building or every house that I'm passing by has 50 gallons stored uh, in these water uh, heaters, okay? So that's just a good little tip to know. So uh, moving on, uh, food, cooking, water. Okay, self-defense. Okay, I'm gonna make this one very short. Now you should have, now this is more so for the men. You should have some form of self-defense, uh, personal protection. I'm not gonna get into, uh, uh, I'm not gonna get into uh, your, um, which gun is better? We can be here all night debating on, you know, AR, AK, um, you know, Glock, Smith & Wesson. I don't care. Get something that you are comfortable with and you can handle. Now, um, uh, we don't need a sword because uh, Esau, that's Esau's domain. Uh, you can't get a sword. God bless Esau with the sword. I hear that in a lot of dumbass camps. Well, what did the Messiah say? This is Luke chapter 22, verse 36. Um, no, sorry, verse 35. Then Jesus answered them, when I sent you out without purse or bag or sandals, did you lack anything? Nothing, they answered. So again, that's, a, that's another verse, a pers personal guarantee from the Messiah. You're going to be fine. We're all going to be a-okay. Verse 36. Now, However, he told them, the one with a purse should take it and likewise a bag, and the one without a sword should sell his cloak and buy one. Okay, so um, more so for the man, if you got a PS5, but you don't have any personal protection to protect you or your family for anything, um, shame on you, okay? sell that PS5 and go buy some personal protection. Now, again, now here's the thing with personal protection. For the love of God, please go get trained. I mean, just go to the gun range and they, they have classes. Just say, hey, I want to take a um, course on, you know, gun safety. And, you know, they'll take you through all the safety things. If you never bought a gun, you're very familiar and comfortable with the gun. You know how to use it. Um, you're fine. That's fine. But even that still practice. OK, because it's a it's a perishable skill. So, I mean, I'm kind of preaching to myself right now. I need to practice uh, with, with the ones I have. So um, find something that's comfortable for you. Buy it and practice with it. OK, now for the uh, now I hate to say men with this one. Um, but with the women, if you're like, I don't want to get one, I'm kind of uncomfortable, I don't like guns, that's fine. Okay, listen, this is, this is, he's talking to the men here, but you have to kind of be aware of the times. If you are single and it's just you and your kid or just you and your elderly parents, you want to get something, okay? Um, you can get a taser, you can get a mace, you can get a knife, but whatever you get, please, for the love of God, train with it. There's millions of videos on YouTube on how to unholster and quickly uh, utilize your can of mace. Please don't spray into the wind, okay? Um, but just stuff like that you don't think about because some people, some people just buy stuff and they don't use it. And we're gonna get into that in other lessons, some of the things that, that are gonna get people killed, just common sense stuff that people don't, you know. But get something, I suggest, get something. Get something that you are comfortable with. I've seen some women that got bow and arrows, some women that got knives. I mean, get get something that you're comfortable with, okay? And, and practice. And and Salakia, if I, if I can, um, you know, it's going to get to that point. Just like what Brother Leo said, you know, people are going to start eyeing what you have. They're going to start, you know, your neighbors know, you know, believe me, they watch you, you know. So it's going to be that point where your neighbors knock on the door, and you know, you, you know, you, you may be some of us that is, you know, not not blessed enough to live amongst other Israelites or other people as ourselves, you know, you may open up the door and it's going to be you against that person. You know, it's going to be like a point where, you know, you try to close the door and they put their foot in the door, you know what I'm saying? And you're going to have to defend yourself. You know, you got to defend it's, it's, it's between you and them, you know, of, of, you know, 
of what's on the other side of your door. And the other side of your door is your family, your loved ones, your children, your goods, you know? So you're gonna be that line. So you wanna be able to defend yourself in this time. And it's gonna get to that. If you watch, I mean, everything on TV, you know, I mean, a good show to watch, you know, if you ever get time, I don't know if you ever, uh, you know, you have Netflix, watch Colony. You know, that's a good show to watch, you know, mm -hmm. as far as like times that that's coming. But, you know, I got two precepts just just to um, support that. This is Second Edges 15. And uh, I'm going to start at 19. And it says, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread. Uh, and for great tribulations, right? And that's the times that he, you know, Brother Leo is speaking about. We are preparing for these great tribulations. As you've seen, we got a glimpse of it. We got a preview during what happened in the, you know, pre-pandemic. You know, we got a glimpse of it. We see the, 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 the shelves, um, you know, the shelves empty. We've seen people fighting, you know, out in the street. We've seen riots going on. We've seen stores being, being you know, ransacked. So this was just a preview. The Most High is preparing us, you know, and we need to be watch watchmen of these things and, you know, get prepared for these times, right? And flipping over to um, um, 16, this is second after 16, and I'm going to start at uh, 31. Salaki, yeah, second after 16 and 31, it says, even so in those days, there shall be three or four left by them that search their houses with the sword. Right. So it's it's they're going to be coming to our houses. They're going to be searched to our houses with the sword. They're going to be looking for goods. They're going to be looking to take whatever they can in those days. It's not going to be those days where, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's Super Bowl parties and it's, um you know, it's, it's, it's birthday parties in the back, you know, backyard with the, you know, with the big, uh you know, the big, you know, trampoline or, you know, the, the you know, the kids running around. You are going to be a constant watch of your house. You're going to be protecting your house, like you know, like as the watchman used to be on the, um, you know, on the wall, right? In 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 the days of past, and as the scriptures say, you know, the Lord will require what once passed. We are returning to those times again, you know. So with that, Con, and 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 with that, um, oh Mike, did you want to say something? Yeah, I was just going to let me back and um bring out like verse um forty. Just to talk about like what you said about um sure. earlier mm -hmm. being pre prepared for like the battle. Um Con, you oh, want me to read that? I got you, King. Uh, yeah, go ahead and read it. Second Ezra 16 and verse 40. Oh my people, hear my word, make you ready to thy battle. And in those evils be as pilgrims upon the earth. All right. So like the reason I wanted to bring that out is um like with or like a lot of the um, preparation you were saying, a good point in, with the um, water heaters, I didn't know that. So like say you're on the run or like say you're moving, that would be like a way for you to still have like a consistent water source. Um, and then like another point I wanted to bring to is, um, Ben, if you could read verse 70 through um, 73, just real quick, Con. just talk about them pillaging. Con, con. This is the book of Second Edges, chapter 16 and verse 70. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses right so um this this just goes to show like they'll they'll be searching the houses just like the um scripture that ben brought out earlier and um when it goes into sparing none i forget the precept but it talks about like the carmanians where it talks about they won't have like respect of gold or like old or young um in those days that's how it's going to be like they're not going to care if you have children or like elderly people with you you're gonna have to defend your people but um it's also like a promise that comes with it can you read verse 74 just to bring out um the fact that if we are in the spirit that we'll we'll be protected 
Khan. I'm gonna start at 73 and I'm gonna read 74. It's it, it's it reads verse seven, uh, second Ezra 16 and 73. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as gold in the fire. Hear, O ye, my beloved saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Con, con. So, you know, as long as we stay in the spirit, keep the faith, um, keep the commandments, you know, there's a promise that comes with, even though knowing these times are upon us, that he will deliver us out of them. So I just wanted to bring that out real quick. Con, that's very good. That's very good. I forgot all about that one. And so when people are saying, oh, you shouldn't prepare, Second Ezra 16 and 40 is a direct commandment to prepare. And you want to be as pilgrims upon the earth. Okay, so that's that's your commandment for you people who just naysayers. Oh, yeah, 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 you ain't got to just have faith. Sit around, do nothing, but you're going to ignore this commandment to prepare for the battle. Okay, so, yeah, and then the whole thing with... Um, you know, like Brother Bing was saying, like to, to protect yours, to, to protect you and yours. Here's a precept just for those who are like, eh, I don't know. This is Psalms 118 and verse five. I will. I called upon the Lord in my distress. The Lord answered me. He set me in a broad place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? The Lord is the Lord has taken his place with them that helped me. Therefore, I shall see my desire upon my enemies. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better than trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations compass me about, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They compass me about, yea, they compass me about, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They compass me about, they compass me about like bees. They are quenched like the fire of thorns, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They have sought to thrust me sword that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and song and has become my salvation. Okay. So again, anyone who comes, and it's a thing like anyone who comes based on all these verses and precepts we brought out, anyone who comes against the children of the Lord during this time and the Lord sees, it says, but Jacob shall be saved out of it. You've got these precepts and the Lord sees, oh, that's the one that has faith. That one's on fire. Let me go send my death angels to go destroy those heathens. Yeah, you might have your little knife and you might think you're doing something. They might, they might actually be you, but the Lord is destroying them. <laughs> you know, in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. Okay, so yeah, you have to have confidence in that. Um, you have to have some level of personal protection. You do have to follow the commandment to prepare. In the part where it says in Second uh, Ezra's, 16 talks about being cast out of their houses. Now, some of us are going to get cast out. You may have 16 years worth of food, clothes, water, ammunition. You may be just have it set. And the funny thing is, you might be have the first one be thrown at your house. Kind of ironic, but, you know, you had faith that the Lord told you prepare for this day. So if you had faith and you still get, you're still part of the ones that get thrown out, it says in that verse, uh, that passage, these will be known who are my chosen, okay? So that just makes you one of his chosen. Like, you're getting cast out. Like, uh, get out of here. Give us your goods because we know you're prepared, okay? So, um... And so, Lucky, if I could just... I got... Just if I could get one more precept on that, just to support sure. what you're saying. Um, this is the book of Revelations, chapter 12 and verse 7. And there was a war in heaven. And we, we know heaven as being the world you know heaven on earth this is our heaven this is heaven for you know for our people you know this is this is the this is esau's heaven right so it was a war in heaven and michael and his angels fought against the dragon and who is the dragon dragon is esau right it says salakia and michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought against his angels right and that i got one more precept to follow up that to support that um, this is uh, Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1, and it reads, uh, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never since, since there was a nation, even to that same time. 
And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. So, you know, that's basically just supporting that we are coming to that time. But as the brother Leo is, um, you know, uh, you know, so eloquently put in, we got to have faith. But in that time, we also got to have our works in that time. We have to endure. You know, we got to endure through it. You know, that's how we're going to be tried. You know, and you know anything that is tried, like it says, we tried in the furnace. If you put anything in a furnace, what's going to happen to it? It's going to either, but it's either going to melt away, right, or it's going to become hard and strong. The, the impurities is, is going to come out of it. It's going to firm up. The other things that that is not, they're going to burn up, right? And on that, um, real quick, can I let me back real quick? Because Leo, you had brought out a point about sure. um, self defense. I wanted to um, touch on Psalms 144, just real quick, just one verse real quick. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, go ahead. Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. So, you know, for people to say like, you know, oh, the Lord would never command us to, you know, defend ourselves to that level. No, that's not true. You you have to defend your family. So with that, I yield. I just wanted to bring that out real quick. Oh, no, that's really good. And, and again, that goes back with the commandment of the Messiah. Sell what you have and go buy a sword. Okay. So, um, you know, the uh, now segueing into the last item for tonight, and then we'll get into questions. Um, this is uh, the bug out bag. So this is in relation to Second Ezra 16 and 40. He says, Be out pilgrims upon the earth. Pilgrims move from place to place, they're like nomads, they don't settle down like we are now in our houses and our homes. <clears throat> Excuse me. So with the bug out bag, a bug out bag is essentially, it, it's a term that came up in the military. Um, it's not mean, oh, you're a bug out, you're bugging out, you know, with the term we use now to talk about people who just went crazy after they left the truth. Um, no, it's a it's an old military term. It's like just a bag that you have on your back that gives you your bare necessities for what you need for a certain period of time, okay? So there's three types of bug out bags. Um, the first one is a, it's called an EDC. It's called a, EDC stands for everyday kit or everyday carry, everyday carry, okay? So that's just like, I, I had an EDC, it's just like, it's just a backpack with just some stuff that if my car ever broke down and I had to get back home, that little back, that backpack had everything I needed to make sure I got home. Okay. Just a couple of bottles of water, um, pocket knife, you know, some couple of bars of, uh, granola, whatever. Okay. Um, the next one is a 72 hour bug out bag. So a 72 hour bug out bag consists of things that you need, uh, to survive for 72 hours. Okay. So, um, this will be this will be a little bit larger than a uh, EDC. So a 72 hour kit will consist of a medical kit. You get a small, large, whatever that fits in your bag. Because again, you're the one carrying this. Um, so you have your medical kit. You have uh, three days if you're assuming that you might not. Uh, well, no, okay, just, just well, I say that for the larger one. So um, the uh, medical kit. Um, some rounds of ammunition, extra box of ammo, whatever, uh, um, some uh, pocket knife, things like that, enough uh, bottles of water or a canteen, uh, <clears throat> snacks, um, those are granola bars, stuff like that, stuff that you eat, that's stuff that you can eat on the go, that's more 72 hours, okay? Um, now, you have the other one, which is a long term. Uh, bug out bag. Those are the type of the ones that you type of, kind of see in the movies with them carrying the backpacks, or you see the campers with the really long backpacks. Um, those are uh, that you, you have everything from the EDC, everything from the 72 hours, but you also have things that you can make a, a shelter with. So like a tarp, you can put a tarp in the 72 hour, it doesn't matter. Um, but you, you, it's, it's, it's a little bit longer. You have a uh, a hatchet or a, a machete, whatever, just like this bag is saying, like, I'm never, ever coming back to my house. And this has what I need for at the bare minimum 72 hours. OK, 
So uh, with that, um, yeah, you could put some clothes in there, some, you know, things to start a fire, um, extra pair of socks, which I highly recommend, pair of socks. Um, during the war, World War II, um, the high, the mo uh, dry socks were a very hot commodity. So if you had an extra pair of dry socks, you were the man to go to next to cigarettes and um, alcohol. So you wanna have some dry socks, okay? Um, extra pair of socks, extra pair of underwear, okay? So this is long-term. Um, now, again, um, this is the problem that a lot of people go into when they start creating these bug out bags. They try to put their whole life into these bug out bags and it, it weighs like 80 pounds. So you want to, however you customize your bug out bag, you want to make sure it fits. It's comfortable for you to walk long distances. Now, some of the stuff you're going to use and you're going to kind of shed away, but, you know, walking out your house and it's, you know, 80 pound pack and you never carried it with it before, you never trained with it, it's going to cause a lot of problems. So just be aware of that, okay? And if you have kids, you want to make one for them too. So um, just have some extra snacks in there that they can carry depending on the age of your kid, if they're, you know, four or five, older. Um, if they're a teenager, you definitely want to have them a full 72 hour, whatever. Um, but for kids, children, um, you want to have uh, just uh, snacks, um, granola bars, a bottle of water, a small med kit, um, you know, band-aids, needle spore, and stuff like that, and uh, a uh, couple of coloring books, okay? Now, you want to have this in your house with everything that if you're in your house for an extended period of time, coloring books are a good option for kids. They're going to get bored. They're going to get, you know, antsy and because they don't have their iPads or their Netflix. So, you know, telling your kid to shut up and have faith and He's four or five. Four or five. <laughs> it's just not. It's, 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 it's not you know realistic. Okay, so okay. something to keep them occupied, you know, is a is a very good option. Uh, so, Rocky, Lee, sure. Go know, ahead. My, I just wanted uh, everybody to pull to refresh. I got a seventy-two hour in my um my picture. That's a seventy-two hour EDC of what Leo. Con, con, that's real good. Now, let's look at this real quick. Um, these are some things I forgot, okay? So to the far left, you see that red little device. That is a hand-cranked radio. Um, they're pretty cheap. Uh, you can just hand-crank it. You can get a signal. Um, if you, ha if you, you can charge it up. It has a battery inside to where you can charge it up and, um, you know, power your devices. So that's another thing. Uh, with power, um, generators... I, I don't recommend, I definitely don't recommend gas generators. Um, they're too loud, they're finite, and they, uh, they, 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 they uh, you need, you need fuel or, you know, they just make a lot of noise. I don't recommend those. If you want to get a solar generator, um, they, uh, they're a better option, but you got to make sure you have some solar panels to power it, okay? Well, if you don't have solar panels, you can get an electric bike to power them, Okay. Those are good options just for power. Okay. I forgot about power. Um, now with, now with the power, um, uh, with the, uh, here's, here's how to measure. So when you go to, if you just type in uh, solar, I mean, if you just type in generators in, um, Amazon, you're going to get a couple of numbers. Okay. So the number, let me just do this real quick. So solar generators. So if you, um, you're going to get a couple of numbers, uh, let me just cut this one. So on Amazon, I'm looking at one right now that's called the Jackery. Okay, it's $199, $199. Now, the number you see next to that one, if you type in anyone's going to have the same set of numbers or different type of numbers. That number you have is 240 watts, okay, backup lithium battery, okay? That 240 watts can only power things that are 240 and below. They say 240, but I... It, I've, I've, I've got, I've got one and it's, 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 it loves you to, to, to power things 200. So you see that 200, I mean, you'll see another set of numbers. So again, you know, um, we had a hurricane here in Houston. I bought a hundred watt generator and I thought I would, I, I, I thought I was, you know, I thought I was something come to find out. I try to plug in my TV and the TV takes 700 Watts of power and that generator uh, didn't do anything. It just laughed and turned back off. So 
when you're gauging how big of generator to get, take your items like, okay, my laptop, uh, my refrigerator, whatever, my, my, my fan, look up how much watts that consumes and that'll tell you um, how much watts um, um, size generator to get. So that 200 watt generator I'm looking at right now, you'll, it'll have a number, whatever number you're looking at, it'll have a number. Um, your refrigerator, is, that's not gonna power your refrigerator. Um, it's, it's more than 200 watts. It's not gonna power your, your TV. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, you have the battery banks. Um, those are good for powering small stuff like your iPhone or your phone, your iPad, small electronics, okay? So with that, uh, look at, looking at uh, Brother Ben's picture, that hand crank radio, um, I would use, so let's say, you know, the power goes out. I would use my battery bank to power that so I can get some information, okay? Some, you know, emergency broadcast of don't go to the city, blah, blah, blah. There's FEMA camp set up. If you need assistance, go here, okay? I would use that or, you know, you can hand crank it, but I've, I have a hand crank and it takes a lot of cranks, okay? So um, um, that's a good one. Now, what else he has here in this kit is a, um, a poncho, okay? So yeah, that's poncho is a good one, to a uh, good thing to have. Now, the, the thing right here with this, what he's looking at, these are pre-made um, 72 hours and they're good. I mean, what they basically what someone did was they took a backpack they put their label on it and they bought a bunch of stuff that you would need and they put it all in a backpack and they sold it. Okay. Very good option. Um, so, um, you know, it's got a compass. It's got, you know, um, some gloves that you may need to work with. It's got some candles. It's got some emergency food. This is a very good kit. Now, here's the thing. Like if you, if, if you're going to say, oh, I don't want to think about none of this. I just want to get a pre-prepared kit. Do that. But uh, please, for the love of God, open up the bag, go through the items, play with them, look up on YouTube on how to use them and if they're good and, you know, get comfortable with the items you buy. Because some things, uh, one thing that's going to get people killed is they got a bunch of, they, they, they bought all this stuff and they bought it in their closet and they, I mean, they just put it in their closet and then when it's time to use it, oh, I bought the wrong charger or oh, this is the wrong inverter or oh, I have no clue how to use this, you know? Um, so whatever you buy, use it. Um, and if you do get a solar generator or a generator, use the generator. The generator gets, um, it gets more energy the more times you use it, if that makes sense. If that battery is just sitting there, it's gonna get stale, old, and you know, depending on how long it's been sitting there, it may, may, it, it, it may work uh, very inefficiently, okay? So uh, I would suggest um, if you're just, like kind of overwhelmed, uh, just buy one. These are not bad. Having this pre-made kit is a lot better than having nothing, okay? Now, if you want to take the time and find the best compass or the best this or the best that, then yeah, you can take that. You can, you can, you can uh, do that. But yeah, that's a, those are very good items to have. And so with that kit, um, now being, bear in mind with trying to add your whole entire life into this kit, or into this bag, you know, the Lord is going to add what you need when you need it. Okay. So, um, you know, don't worry about like, don't start panicking because you ran out of space or whatever, just have the bare necessities. Okay. Um, you know, of the things, you know, if you got more space or you want to get a bigger bag, that's fine, but, uh, make sure it's comfortable. You can carry it for long distances and, um, you have one for your kids if you need be now. Again, the Lord knows your situation. He knows how much money you make. He knows you have kids. He knows um, your baby mom or baby daddy's crazy. He knows you have elderly parents who may need more assistance than others. He knows all this. And yet and still, you're going to be okay. Okay. So. And Salaki, if I can't say, Brother Leo. Um, yeah, just on the fact of, you know, what he's telling you, prepare yourself, you know, um, a lot of people don't come from a background of any type of military or law enforcement training. And even so, if you have any of that training, you got to continue to train, to train. Remember that shooting, um, these things are perishable skills. So, you know, the longer you don't practice, you will, you will be out of practice. You know, you're just not going to be a perfect shot or know what to do. Uh, if you just sitting around and then, you know, 
you know, stuff hits the fan and then you have to hop up and, you know, load your gun up or find your gun and you'll be fumbling around, rounds falling all over the floor, you know, trying to, you know, put on your boots or whatever the case is. You should have these things, you know, you practice how you play, you know what I'm saying? So, or you play how you practice rather. So you should have these things, you know, going through drills, you know, preparing your household. And, you know, not everybody I, I know is not rich, but just in case, say it's a case where you can't get to your home and everything, all hell breaks loose. You know, you might want to have, a, you know, a, a, a bug out bag in your car if you can do so. But, you know, if you do have one home, it should be prepped, like your brother uh, Leo said, and prepared. The goods, you know, where you need to get to it, men. Have your, you know, your swords set up, ready to go, you know, in a safe spot. Because if you have children, you want it to be in a safe spot, but you want it to be prepared, well oiled, you know, or and, and you know, ready to go. You know, you want to be able to use these things. Know where your um, equipment is that you can get your equipment on and get your family to safety. You don't want to be fumbling around trying to put together um, this bug out bag. And, and, you know, in the time of chaos, you know, when you, you know, when people are at your door, you know, you want your family to know where these things is if, if in case you become incapacitated. You want to train your family how to respond as well. You know, if women are, if you alone, you want to train and prepare your children of where to go, you know, what to get, you know, and, you know, until you can get to them, have words that you, you know, you know, code words and things like that. And, um, you know, just things like that. You, we got to, you know, practice these things, you know, as we are coming back into our, this understanding, the, uh, the Bible says, you know, we practice in these righteous acts. So, you know, we also, you know, we, we're practicing how to get ourselves prepared, you know? So with that, I yield back, give it back to you, Leo. Con, con, absolutely. Um, definitely need to practice. Um, yeah, it's that you got all this stuff or you don't have anything or whatever you have, uh, get comfortable using it. I mean, that, that builds confidence um, and, you know, um, that you're going to have it. So one thing um, I'm um, with that, I'm done. So one thing uh, we're going to cover on the next lesson are skills. Okay. i um, going to go into a bunch of list of skills that are uh, beneficial and things that we can start learning. Now you don't, I don't have any money. You can learn these for free. They're pretty simple. Okay, so we're going to cover that next time. Um, and uh, with that, I am done. Thank you all for listening. Hopefully this was beneficial. Uh, we can ask, I can answer some questions. If you want, have any questions, you can raise your hand. Um, but just kind of know for going forward, like we're going to cover other topics regarding this. Um, uh, go, to, go into a few of these other details I covered in a little bit more detail, but also cover, cover more uh, topics that uh, people don't really think about. Uh, regarding uh, this type of situation. So if there's any questions, uh, raise your hand. We can get them answered. Con, Con, anybody with any questions on, you know, you know, Jacob's trouble in general? You're so far. Got sister. Get her up here. Shalom, sis. Shalom, sis. Shalom. Um, I'm new to all of this. Maybe it's only been like a month, month and a half. Uh -huh. I've heard y'all talking about um, Jacob's trouble before. Um, and I, I get like anxiety about it, right? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's no, like it's freaking it's me it's out. Fun. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I, I guess my, my one question is, why is this happening? Like, I know... You know, I've been, I was raised in a Christian church, right? So we talk a lot about the rapture and things like that. But why yep. is this Jacob's trouble happening? Like, and then, and and I'm glad y'all, you know, reveal the promises in the scriptures, right? That come after talking about preparing and prophesying what's going to happen. And then you followed up with the promise that we're going to be okay, that the word says we're going to be okay. But why would we even be here in the first place? You know, I'm like, what's going on? You know? Like, I'm like, I'm sorry, can you repeat that last part of your question? You said, why I'm saying, are we why do we even have to be here in the first place? Like, why is this happening and why do we even have to be a part of it? So, as opposed to? I, the rapture, like, why? Uh, oh, this, okay, okay, gotcha. Okay. Why, didn't, why isn't the Most High going to remove us from the trouble in the first place? You get what I'm saying? Right, so why? Well, I can answer that. We'll just kind of uh, get some questions, I think. 
why didn't he just pull the children of Israel out of Egypt and, instead of making them walk across the Red Sea? Or why did he not just rapture up Noah in the heavens while he flooded the earth? Why did Noah have to prepare an ark? Or why during the three Hebrew boys going into the furnace, why did he just strike down Nebuchadnezzar? Or why when David went to go fight Goliath, why didn't God just plague Goliath with disease and David didn't do anything? I can answer those. No, and I'm just saying, like, oh. just thinking about, like, no, those are. Those, I mean, part of this is a, is an example for 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 God to show His glory. So, um, the the so I guess to answer your question, like, and, and that's one thing that I came out of the Christian church, and that whole rapture doctrine is very dangerous because that church is wholly and entirely unprepared for this. Okay, like the worst people are going to be. Um, um Christians. They 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 are because like like you said, they don't have the rap they thought the rapture was coming, like I was gonna just snatch them up. They're not keeping the commandments. They're they follow all the pagan holidays, but God's gonna snatch them up. No, no. So um part of it is part of God's deliverance. I mean that's how he delivers us. So let me go to uh oh um if Mike or King Ben wanna uh, jump in. I, I got a precept I'm bringing out. This is Jeremiah 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, and there is none like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So we're going to be saved. Now, the problem is, well, no, it's not a problem. I'm, I'm, I made peace with it. He's going to save us how he wants to save us. You understand? I understand that, you know, he's going to prove us and test us, but also show his glory. And uh, I'm just nervous. I had small kids, you know, it's just a lot. And uh, and my, uh, my last question was, I heard you all say, like, if you have to leave or go to safety. And I'm just like, where would anybody, where would I go? If I'm not in my home, where is it to go? Just be outside i got a, i got a, i got an answer were you were you here at the beginning the very beginning um i'm not sure i was in the sister's room so i no, no, I no that's good, that's good. maybe that's like about no. an hour ago that's definitely a good place to be so here's to uh here's to answer this question where will you go this is a very good question this is a uh, second ezra chapter 16 verse 67 and here's some instructions very important so please this is second ezra 16 67 Behold, God himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. For God shall lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. Okay, so let's break this down. He's the judge. You fear him. You don't fear FEMA. You don't fear Dr. Fauci. You don't fear NWO. You don't fear... NWA, you don't fear anybody, okay? You fear him. He's the judge. After you fear him, or this is part of, this is the process of you fearing him, leave off from your sins. Forget your iniquities. Don't let, don't let them come to your mind. And don't even meddle with them no more forever. You do those things, just like what I read in Jeremiah 30 and 7. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. So when you say, oh, where to go, where to do, where to do, blah, 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 he will lead you. You will know where to go. It may be just simple, something, it may be something as simple as leave your house. Okay, just get out. Uh, just, I'll take care of it. So, um, but the thing is, he's not telling you that, you know, to us as humans, it may be very vague. Like, uh, I need more direction. Like, do I go to my uncle's house? Do I go here? Do I go there? Um, this is, um, he's going to lead you. And where and how he's going to lead you, only he will tell you when it's time. So the Most High God had no obligation to part the Red Sea until the children of Israel got to the Red Sea. So that is something not even thinking, just make sure you're prepared. 
Like, oh, we're going on a trip. Oh, where are we going? Don't worry about it. Just pack your bags. Where? Just pack your bags. So first instruction is, before you even worry about where to go, fear him. Leave off from your sins. Forget your iniquities. Don't even meddle with them forever. So shall he shall lead you forth and deliver you. So after you do that and fear him, part of is saying what he's going to do in terms of protecting you, he's going to do. Like, man, he's a very terrible God. He can put me, he could take his hand away from me and I'll be out there like the rest of them. Going to All-Star Weekend, buying PS5s, just stupid stuff. Okay? So it's anxiety, but you have to get in these scriptures and you have to get in this word and you have to get in his promises to combat that. Understood? The water. Can I can I answer the first question though? Because you asked like how we had to go through it. Um, I was gonna grab First Peter one and seven just real quick. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto, unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Christ. So, um, basically, the reason we have to go through it is so we can be tried like gold for fire. Amen. Amen. And, and that whole thing of the rapture doctrine, where's the, where's the trying by fire? So you're sitting at your couch, you're watching uh, Power or whatever the hell sees a uh, show out there. They got out there now, Snowfall. And then the Lord says, oh, my, my faithful daughter, come on, get rapture. I'm going to destroy this place. Like, how did you get tried? Like, huh? So that's the very, that's, that's that, that rapture doctrine. I mean, I came from it and it, it had a hold on, it still has a hold on that church I, I left. It is a strong delusion. That is delusional to think that every other, you know, when you hear the stories of all the other Christians, quotations, they may be Christians. When you hear all their stories of how they're being persecuted, somehow America, who's 10 times more wicked, uh, you get raptured, not everybody else. There's no trying by fire. So hopefully that answers your question, sister. The water. Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been anxious. I've been like, oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Like, calm down. Take a breath. Get in this word. And whatever uh, resource you have, start preparing. Uh, what's going on, King? What's going on, Michelle? What's, what's happening? Con, con, you know, I just wanted to touch on a few points. I just uh, had a precept for the sister. Sure, con, bring, it out. Bring, bring it out, okay? Con, con, this is Hebrews chapter 12. It reads, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us, and let us run with the patience the race that is set before us. Right? So don't look, don't look at your former sins, don't look at the things that weigh you down in this thing, man. Because when you come to serve the Lord, you know, you got to prepare yourself for these temptations, especially in these last days. Verse 2, looking unto Yahweh Shai, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Right? Because even our Lord, Yahweh Shai, he had to go through the same thing that we about to go through. Right? And go and the things that we about to go through is just like when you join the military. What do they do? The first thing they do when you get into the military, and they try you with the the gas, the gas mask, the the, the tear gas. You know, you got to wake up late nights, you know, and go out there and train. And that's the same thing. That's the same thing we have to do, and it's truth, right? Verse three: For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself. Lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. Right? Because when this day comes, it hey, for a lot of a lot of even brothers and sisters that are in this truth are gonna fall out of this truth, right? And and it's gonna be like it's gonna be such a time like never before, like it says in Daniel 12. And, you know, you really got to have a lot of faith in that day. It says, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son. Right? And this is to answer her question on why we have to go through this. 
and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Right? So all this, all these things that we're finna go through, hey, we should be delighting in this thing, man. Even though all hell finna break loose, uh, we might lose our kids because they being wicked. Man, we gotta, man, we gotta fight this. We gotta fight this battle, and we gotta continuously pray day in and day out, right? We gotta continuously pray because this time that's coming is not no, it's not no joke, right? So you gotta endure this chastening because this is what the Most High is doing. Right. This is how you if you scared. Right. If you if you, uh, you know, you kind of feeling like you, you got some things to look to, to look back on and be like, man, there's a lot of things I need to repent. You know, hey, the most high dealing with you. Right. So you got to endure this chastening and take and, and, and get this fight going. And with that, I yield. Con, con, I got to oh, preach. Um, this is uh, this kind of destroys that whole rapture doctrine again. This is uh, John 15 and 20. Remember the word I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will all they will they will keep yours also. So again, um, just as much as there are many scriptures that talk about us being protected and taken care of. It's going to be uncomfortable, um, to say the least. Okay, so um, you know, again, that right there again destroys the rapture doctrine. But then they'll throw some other scriptures in there to kind of cover it up. But no, uh, we got to go through something, and so hence being called Jacob's trouble. We are Jacob. We're about to go through trouble, but we will be saved from it. Come, uh, you know, I got one more precept. I know we're about to get up out of here. Um, this is uh, Revelations 2 and 10. It says, Fear uh, none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. And thou, and Salakia, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So you got to be prepared in these times, you know, you can't be fearful and ask why are we going through this? You know, you know, you know why we going through this cuz we got to get up we got to get up out of here. That's our only way out of here. We got to endure. You know what I'm saying? It says we got to drink that cup that, you know, Yahweh shall drink. So that's what we we are preparing for. All of this is in preparation and you know what preparation victory victory favors the prepared. So you know, I'm not going to keep everybody getting long. I think Brother Jake is starting a, um, a Shalom and Chill Room. But I think everybody's coming out. Um, um, if you can, make sure you follow all the brothers on stage. Follow the brother that came up. It's a powerful brother. Um, and go out and do the work, Brother Masha. Um, make sure you follow that brother. Make sure you follow Brother Mike, myself, um, Brother Leo. Uh, click on the um, Thy Kingdom Come. Um the, um, the little house make sure you uh, become a member nominate someone we're going to be doing these um uh basically this is just episode one so we're going to be doing these uh periodically we're going to try to get them in at least once or you know every at least every two weeks or every other week um and um you know we're going to be switching it up a bit we also got the uh i believe it's the um the midday brew blend that we're going to be doing we we'll to try to do it daily just for around an hour to give you that quick brew uh, information on current events, how it relates to, you know, our, us as a people, our social issues, things like that, things going on around the world as it relates to prophecy. We're going to be bringing out a lot of information, you know, we, you know, bringing out that research that y'all need. We're going to be doing, we got some classes coming up regarding things like child support, things like uh, prepping, you know, growing um, food for some of the ladies. And, um, you know, this is just like, you know, and, and I want to let everybody know we're, we're, we're connected with all the other groups. So make sure you follow, you know, uh, Crown of Thorns. If you click on my profile and go down on Brother Leo, uh, you know, go down and follow the club Crown of Thorns. 
make sure you follow the one third club make sure you also follow um free smoke fridays um follow all of those clubs because we're basically we're all sis you know we're all sister clubs of 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 those clubs you know uh, you know and we all connect to one another we're not t- trying to take away from any of those clubs this is all the information we're trying to give you the a mass amount of information to, that you need, you know, and, and you be able to get it all from all of the sources, you know. So when you know, we all we all working together. We're all part of the body, and you know, make sure you you know uh, if y'all have any questions, y'all can hit me up in the DMs. Hit um, brother Leo up and brother Mike. All right, and with that, um, say shalom to everybody. Thank y'all for coming out, and um. You'll be notified for when uh, the next rooms and the, and the next um, uh, we schedule the more of the other rooms. Shalom. <clears throat>